I'm standing here at this exhibit piece, which is called Migration North. This is by a man that I would call, you know, I knew him as Uncle Friday. And so he was a local artist and he was a maker of many things. I knew him to make me a weris. But when I saw these pieces and they said that these were part of the townsville's strand ephemera, I thought, wow, how beautiful. It adds a pop of colour. It's also the way kids should look at things and think outside the box. What does a coconut look like? Other than something you can eat, you can turn it into fish. And that's what this is about, is just understanding that not all artworks need to be something that is like overly thought out. It can be a moment of fun. And so for me, just putting this into the exhibition is that moment of fun and allowing children to become immersed in fun because, you know, who would have thought to do coconuts as a part of an exhibition? But for me, this 2009 winning piece from this old fella to me was fantastic. And so when I saw it, I knew, yep, it had to be in this exhibition. This room, as part of this exhibition, I actually called it the girls' room because in here we're showcasing female artists. And so as part of that, just showing the strength of what we girls can do. Plus also too, out here in the main space, we have works on paper by guys. And in this space, we have works on paper by women. And so therefore, just having that point of difference of saying, this is the most masculine space, to coming into saying this is a feminine space. And so for me, just the difference between the two and the appreciation of how people do things, I said, it's like chalk and cheese. And there's a mat behind me on the wall that is beautiful and you know, and it takes a bit of time, but you also, if you stand and look at it, you get an appreciation of the time it took to make that piece of work. In this room, we have a beautiful colorful picture that's done by Bai Kebe. Now, Bai is actually my niece, but she's also a Folidomai baby, which means she was born with two digits out of her elbows. And so to look at this artwork behind me and actually celebrate her as an artist is an achievement in itself because the fact that she paints with her, her digits, with her arms all together, fantastic, I can't do that. But you know what, I take my hat off to her because she's an accomplished artist and she needs to be represented within the girls' room. This room here I've dedicated to Lindsay Wilson. Lindsay Wilson was an author of a book talking about items from the Torres Straits. He also did drawings of the items that people used in everyday activity as well as things that were artifacts. And so for me, just can, having this room dedicated to Lindsay Wilson was a moment of recognising his talent as an artist, but also putting this fabulous book together. And so for me, just having this book in this exhibition because the works that are on the wall were actually donated to the Townsville City Council to be part of their collections. And so for me, showcasing them alongside his book is, is just a wonderful piece to have in this exhibition. As part of the Eastern Threads exhibition, I've decided that with this space, it, I needed to bring some of my own things that, you know, connect me to the East. And that's my dad. And so that's why a lot of people know of my dad, but they don't realize that he with Noel Loose wrote a book. I've also bought in from my own personal collection, his pots that he made. He made these pots in 1984 when he was a student at James Cook University. And so for me, just acknowledging his artistry as a maker also, because a lot of people think, you know, he was just the fighter for, of land rights, but he wasn't. He was also, he did watercolor, he made pottery, he made things at home and he showed us how to make things 
at home as we were growing up. And he inspired us by the stories he told us of the islands where he grew up and the things that he did. And when I was eight, the first time I ever went back to Murray Island, he showed us and he sat us down on a beach. And the beach was called Werbadu. And on this beach, he put into our hand some sand. And he said, look for the stars. And we're going, this sand. He goes, no, look. And when we looked closely at the grains of sand, we could see that the grains of sand were actually star shaped. Now, I remember keeping a bottle of sand in a coffee bottle and I brought it home and I've always kept it. And with that, I took it to the microscopic labs in Sydney and they put it under a microscope. They got a 3D read off it so I could get plastic stars made from what that looked like, that grain of sand to become something that I could actually hold in my hand on a bigger scale. And I use that in my artworks. Then I took it along to the Urban Art Practice building in Brisbane. And they actually then said, we can actually make these bronze stars. So that's what we have in the case too, is that connection with my father from the Torres Straits to my story of us together finding these stars. <laughs>